So, so Trez is a social community mobile app for black women around the world to find hairstyle inspiration. So on Trez, not only do ladies find hairstyle inspiration, they find rich information about each hairstyle. So information like the name and location of the salon, the name of the hair product or hair extension that was used, and the price range for having that hairstyle fixed. So I think that's the value we provide to women looking for hairstyle inspiration around the world. The word tress in English means a lock or strand of hair and in French it means braid so it just it was just the perfect word to use for the app. Oh, okay so um, we are ladies and then we are solving a problem which ladies face. So we found out that um, Whenever we see hairstyles around, we, we feel these hairstyles are so nice, we want to get information about it. But then sometimes we just walk to absolute strangers. Oh, why is you, where do you do your hair? What kind of weave on do you use? Sometimes people get pissed. They don't want to talk to you about it because they are maybe in a hurry to go somewhere. So I face that a lot of us face it as well. I, I try searching for a hair. Um, a kind of weave on I saw online and I went to like three markets big markets I didn't find any and then it got to us like it was like this is a really big issue for us ladies and we thought of solving it and that's that brought up dress Well, it's, it's a combination of things actually. So I think Cassandra was the one who started thinking about hair. We hadn't, she hadn't really figured out what we wanted to do with hair, was wanted to build something together. So she spoke to Esther and realized that a, there's a problem. She's been looking for a hair piece for a while and she hasn't found it. There's, there should be something there. There should be a problem that we should be able to solve because she's identified one herself. So then they came to see me that they realize the hair industry is something that is big amongst us as black ladies and there are little issues that are there that we can use technology to solve. And in addition to that, Esther is in Accra, she's Nigerian but she has been staying in Accra for the past a year and a half and finding saloons and where to do your hair was very difficult for her. And we had a classmate who had been looking for a specific hair piece for how many months? She never found it but she really wanted that specific hair piece to do. So we thought, this must be a common problem. I have walked up to over 10 people to ask them about their hairstyles before, just for information, not just, um, it's looking nice, but where did you do it, how much did it cost, and what's the name of the hair piece you use? So we started asking people around, our friends, we went on the street, spoke to a lot of people, and realized it was a common problem. So we decided to go ahead and build something. I don't know if Esther has something to add. Um, like she said earlier, I've been in Accra for a year and a half, and it, back in Nigeria, it was easy to find, go to the nearest salon and get my hair done. But then in Accra, I had two challenges. One, I was going natural, so I had um, a short fro, and I, w I wasn't sure which salon could do that. So, so that was one, one of the factors that came into play as well. So I kept asking people, where can I do my hair? I remember asking one of my senior at mess, and she introduced me to a salon. And so we, we, and we didn't want to, we started, when we started thinking about the idea, we didn't want to build just another salon directory yeah. because that has been done and that doesn't really solve the problem. So we thought, okay, let's start with um, a building, let's build a platform where people can share their hairstyle and actually provide information. As a naturalista, I stalk Instagram and Pinterest looking for what to do to my hair and I mean, the next hairstyle to do, but then um, even if they mentioned the product, where should, where will I get the product from and who can do that hairstyle? So there, there were a couple of loopholes that we, we've, we came across when we were conceptualizing the idea and we thought that let's start with the MVP, which is like a minimum viable product where we build a platform, a crowdsourced platform, let's open it to everybody post your air style, provide the information, and let's just open it up to everyone and let people interact and 
let's see what happens from yeah. there. So that's that's how it starts. Yeah. Um, for me, I work on the front end, so I do I do the Android parts. So um, before I wasn't doing Android, I was doing more web development. But then because we were doing trust and we felt that trust would be very good when you do a mobile app. So we thought of doing Android and I had to learn. So for our first um, release, not release to the world, but then test, um, I was learning while I was doing pro um, programming trust or um, creating trust. So it was a little slow, even though we had to get things very fast it was a little slow but then i think with that i learned a lot from it even though it was a challenge but then it helped me a lot yeah yeah, yeah. so um to add to that um at, at the beginning when we started building the product i mean we had to decide if we wanted to make a, a web app or a mobile app i mean i remember having a lot of conversation. conversation on that and so and like like she said, I also I was building um, web applications. I I had never programmed Android before, and so we we had to learn and build it at the same time. And what really helped is we were building and testing it with the Ghana community of people who do hair. So when we first built the first version, um, we tested it with people a lot of people were around it girls and they came to testing and oh this should happen this should not happen so we we're taking feedback and we went back again and developed it a bit further and we took feedback and you know we've we've grown a lot yeah you know from when we started and now I mean we're, we're trying we're making sure like we are applying the be best practices you know of um, building Android applications and also you know handling the server side as well so yeah. yeah. In addition to that, on the business side for the app, for us, and especially from Cassandra's point of view, when you see the app like that, there's so much involved in the app, knowing where to put the buttons, knowing what sort of questions people want to know when they see a hairstyle, because there's so many things people have to ask. So finding those top three questions to make sure that people answer on the app. So we had to do a lot of research, going out to speak to people. That was a bit challenging too, because we wanted to get it right. We didn't want to just do anything where people didn't find value in. So yeah. that was a challenge for a while. And sorry, but another thing is, um, I can't remember, before we were going to get information from users, so when you want to post a hairstyle, you have to provide some information, prizes, the kind of reborn or hair page reviews. It was a challenge because we didn't want a situation where whenever someone wants to post a hairstyle, it has to be like they have to feel a long form before they post. If not, you are pushing your users away. So we had to think through like for a week or two to decide what kind of information you're going to take from our users and make it simpler for them so that they don't go off your platform. Your platform. Yeah. Um, yes, we have big plans for the app. We, we are launching it this week in Nigeria, so meaning you can download it from anywhere in the world. Um, our app is a social app, and for a social app to really work and thrive, you need people to be on the platform contributing, and there should be a, a sense of community on the app, so that when you put something up, you feel like people care about what you put up. If you ask a question, people will answer. If you comment, people will respond. So that is what we are focusing on now. We want the app to go to that point where it thrives on its own. It can even extend beyond the app. So people come in there to find solutions to real problems we face as women, to do with our hair normally. So that's, that's where we see the app going. Mm -hmm. We expect it to grow beyond the borders of Nigeria or Ghana, even beyond the continent where black women find true value on our app and they recommend it to their friends and friends of friends to use. In addition, we'll add features that will make them happy, that they'll find value in. So right now, this is our very, our very first version and there are lots of interesting things we know we should add as features to keep them engaged, keep them excited, keep them wanting to come back for more. So that's what we are focusing now on as a team and hoping to get there. Yeah, so I was about to say, in terms of your comment about the challenge has been overcome. Yes, but then we are <laughs> we are 
we are um, there will be new challenges yeah. because we, we the way we we have this core value in our team where we are open and agile to listen to the consumers and improve on, upon the app and build features that the community really wants. So we have an idea of what we want Trust to be like in our head and we, are, we have a list of features that we want to apply but then right now that's why we decided to okay right now we're not adding any new feature we're releasing it the first version and let's see comments that people i mean response, feedback yeah. and people have given us a lot of feedback so we now need to sit back a little bit and then pick which one we're going to develop that will make the app really stick with people yeah so yeah so So monetization, we are thinking about two ways to monetize at the moment. Um, but bear in mind that all of monetization will happen once we have at least about 20,000 users and above. So we're thinking about first, um, there was a particular weave that I was looking for. And we're thinking that if I, I, I saw it on Instagram, but then I didn't know how to get it, where to get it from. So what if we had a buy, you see a picture on Trust, and we add a buy button to it, and a user can just click the buy button, and we, the Trust team, will sort out the we for you, and you will get it right in, at your house. Not just we, we could be a product, like a natural hair product, we guys, whatever product you need. So long the person enters it there and you want it, we can get that delivered to you. We can sort that out for you. That's one way. Yeah. Another way is through advertisement, the good old advertisement. We know that um, um, air companies, black air companies like relaxers, people who sell, who make relaxers, um, dark and lovely expression, darling yaki, Revlon, and the likes. They do advertisement. Imagine if they have a community of people who are passionate about hair, a community where where they can reach, where the only thing that happens on that platform is hair. You know, imagine them having access to that. That's the second way we're looking to monetize. Yeah. Hi, my name is Priscilla Hazel. I'm the CEO, co-founder, and I'm the hustler of the team. <laughs> Hi, my name is Esther. I am the CTO, co-founder, and the hacker of the Trust team. <laughs> Hello, my name is Cassandra. I'm the product lead, the co-founder of Chess, and the hipster of the team. <laughs> so keep, keep watching, watching Paul, Paul TV. TV.